Hello all. Today I'll talk about step-by-step -step setup of IBM DB2 TSA 2 node instance HA. This is an active passive solution. This is not a HADR. This needs shy storage. As you know, HADR does not need a shy storage. This particular solution does need a shy storage. What do you mean by active passive? What active passive means the instance or the database will be up and running only on the active node or one node on the other node it will be in the shutdown state if anything happens to the active node such that it crashes it is not able to connect to the network it is not booting up then the instance and the database will automatically fail over to the passive node i'll be using db2 11.5.6 linux 7.8 virtualbox 6.1.26 what I'll do is like I'll cover how to set it up. I'll explain everything and then we will move to the practical part. So we need to have two hosts 7.8. I'm using Linux 7.8 host. My host names are DB1 and DB2. The instance user that I'll be using is DBP. Make sure that the, this instance user is there on both the nodes and also make sure that the instance the user ID and the group ID for the instance owner and the fenced user is same. In my case, I'm using the instance owner and fenced user as a one, uh, but in production, try to avoid that. The install DB2 on both the nodes, I'm using DB2 11.5.6 community edition. So make sure that you install the DB2 11.5.6. I'll not be covering how to install the DB2 setup uh, database software because the, the it is very similar to how you do it on standalone instance there is no difference except that you need to install the tsa libraries networking we only need one public ip we do not need private ip or multiple ips we only need public ip so i'll show you how my ip configuration looks like and you need to make sure that host one is able to communicate to host two and host two is able to communicate to host one so they need to be able to communicate to each other as I mentioned that this is an active passive, this is not an HADR, which means this needs a shy storage. I'll be using a SCSI protocol. My SCSI drive is coming from a free software called TrueNAS or FreeNAS previously. It's a, uh, all of this, the Node 1, Node 2 and uh, the TrueNAS software is running on my personal machine. Uh, it's a laptop and all three machines are running. So this is my TrueNAS box. This is my node one and this is my node two. So all three machines are running on the same laptop. You, if you, if your laptop is not powerful and you have a smaller configuration, you can set up another laptop as a shared storage. It's up to you. I'll not be covering how to set up the shared storage. I'll just use the, the I have already configured a SCSI drive. I will be mounting it. I'll show you how to mount it, but how to set up the SCSI drive is something that it's it's a big topic and if i start covering that it's it, this particular tutorial will be lengthy so i do not want to do that you can use any of your uh, uh, network sharing methods so i'll be using scuzzy protocol then we'll be creating the file system the file system will be created only on the first node we will not create the file system on no, uh, both the nodes because whatever file system that you create on the first node it will be seen on the second node because it's a shared storage then we'll be adding an entry in etc fs tab the then we'll be mounting the file system creating a mount point mounting the file system and we'll be creating some directories for instance home diag path backup database and arc location remember that we have to do this again only on one node because it's a shared storage whatever you do on the first node will be accessible on the second node so I have highlighted here that this we have to run it only on one node. Everything has been done by root. So I'll be changing the permissions to DBP DBA, the instance owner. I'll change the shared file file permission to the instance owner. This is the most important step. We will be changing the home location of the instance owner to the shared location. So we'll I'll modify the etc password file to change the home location of the instance owner to the shared path. Then we'll verify that home path is changed. Then we will be creating the instance on node 1 using db2 i create command. So we'll create the instance on node 1 using db2 i create. Our work on node 1 is completed and now it's a time to move to node 2. So on node 2, we'll be recreating the instance on node 2. So first, before doing that, what we need to do is again, we have to discover the SCSI, mount the disk. Here you can see I'm not for creating the file system because it has we have already done this on node one so i'll just make the directory the create the mount point mount the file system and then change the 
home uh, directory of the instance owner again to the shared location so that's done and then to recreate the instance i will be deleting this particular sql lib directory if i don't delete the directory it will say the instance already exists and the db2 i create command will fail i'll show you that it will fail so what we need to do to do that workaround is first we'll delete this you can either rename it or delete it is your personal choice and then once that is done we'll be recreating the instance then what i'll be doing is i'll create the database on the node 2 so my node 2 uh, is now is where i'm doing so i'll create uh, set the before creating the uh, before creating the database i'll set the default db path to shared location the direct path to the shared location and then i'll create the database convert the database into archival logging and then uh, i'll take the backup to convert the database and that's done so we have created our database the final part is setting up the tsa before doing that the node one was shut down so i'll power it on the node one set up the tsa so as root i'll run these commands on both the nodes and as instance owner i'll run the db2 hiq minus f instance so i'll be using one file to set up my uh, tsa and this particular file that i'll be using is actually a modified version of a sample file available in instance home directory sql lib samples ha xml i'll show you this particular file how it looks like and the original file i'll show you that once that is done we will shut down the node 2 remember that we created the database on node 2 so the node 2 was our active node so i'll shut down the node 2 and you will see that everything from the node 2 will move to node 1 so let's start uh, with our activity so let me connect to my node 1 which is the white box node 2 which is the green box so these are my two boxes let me go to the beginning of the document and so two nodes db1 and db2 so this is db1 and this is db2 the next part is install db2 11.56 on both the nodes so verify that the db2 11.5.6 is installed so i'll running the db2 ls command to verify and you can see 11.5.6 and here also you can see db2 11.5.6 so i've installed db2 on both the nodes so that's done the IP as I mentioned that I have only one IP cat etc host you can see I have only one IP and here also you can see I have only one IP 101 IP belongs to node 1 102 IP belongs to node 2 so one ending with one belongs to one ending with two belongs to two so we will verify using if config I can see I can show you that the IP is 101 for node 1 and 102 for node 2 so that's done and we should be able to the db2 should be able to communicate to db1 so that's done and db1 should be able to communicate to db2 so that's done so they are able to communicate to each other so the networking part is done the next part is shared location so before doing that what i'll do is as you can see that i have got a to e these are all local disk then from the true nas box this is my true nas box from this particular box the, as you can see the ip of this box is 192.168.1.24 that's the ip that i have used this is a free software as i mentioned you can configure uh, the all the storage using a gui so it gives you a gui it's a free software no license required so if you can if you go here sharing and scuzzy you can set up the scuzzy so i have i have set up the 20 gb disk for using this gui it's a pretty simple it's pretty easy to set up there are a couple of youtube videos on how to do it so i'm using the free nas software to set up my shared storage so let's discover the portal so that's done then we will log into the portal that's done and now i will run the same command once again and you can see that i have a 20 gb it shows 21.5 but it's a 20 gb disk the dev sdf which was not here as you can see the last disk was dev sde now i have a dev sdf so let's create a file system this command we have to run only on one node so i'm doing that pressing y so i've done i've created a file system on node 1 ext4 file system i'll be adding an entry in etc fs tab once that is done so let me clear vi etc fs tab add an entry in this particular file so i'm going to add an entry in this particular file for the shared location so what i'm saying is the db2 s sdf the new disk that we discovered that particular disk i'm mounting as db2 ha as ext4 file system 
so I'm making it pretty so that it looks good. So I'm I've done that and I'm going to save this. So that's done. So we have added an entry in ATC FS tab. So now I'll create the mount point. So this is the mount point. Before mounting, I'll just show you that I do not have DB2HA. I do not have any mount point of DF uh, 20 GB. So now I will mount this particular file system. And once it is mounted and run the same command and you can see that I have got a 20 GB disk. So that is also done. The next part is we need to create some subdirectories in the mount point that we just created. So let me take this command and run it all together on node one. So that's done and verify those those directories are created. LS minus L as you can see all the directories, but the directories are owned by root. We need instance owner to be able to write to those directories. So what I'll do is I will change the permission of those directories to the instance owner. So DBP, I have changed the permission from root to instance owner. I have done that. The next, so we have, every, so now the most important part is changing the home location of the instance owner. So let me show you su minus dbp and you can see the home location is home dbp we need to change this home location to share storage which is db2ha so what i'll do i will modify the etc password file i'll modify this particular file i'm trying to do it using the instance owner so that won't work so let me exit and i'll edit the etc password file go down comment out the existing home path add an entry to this particular file to show or say that the home directory for the instance owner is shared location so that's done verify that we have done those changes so grab dbp so you can see that the the home location of that from ho home dbp i have changed it to db2ha this particular db2ha is our shared location i it's such it's a 20 GB disk. So now if I go as the instance owner, you will be able to see that the, the original path was home DBP. Now it is DB2 HA home, which is the shared location. So that's done. So we have done everything. And now our final step is to create the instance on node one. So I'm going to create the instance on node one. So once this is done, once the instance is created on node one, I'm going to shut down my node one because all of my work on node one is done and we will move to node two. So on node two, we will be again mounting the file system, changing the home directory. So whatever steps we have done on node one, we will exactly do the same thing, except we'll not create the file system and we will not create the subdirectories because it's a shared file system. So whatever changes that we have done on node one, they should be visible on node two. So let's wait for the instance. Okay, the instance is created. So we are good. So now I'll do dip, uh, shut down minus H now. So I'm shutting down the node one. So that's done. My node one is right now getting shut down. So now it's a time to move to the node two, the green box. Okay, so clear. So here what we need to do, so let's, we have to recreate the instance. So before recreating the instance, I'll show you my disks. So as you can see, I have up to E, I do not have the 20 GB disk. So let's discover the disk. So, and log into the portal. That's done. Run the same command again. And you can see dev SDF. Now we will create the, we will add an entry in etc fs tab. So vi. It is a FS tab, add the entry, whatever we have done on node one, I'm just repeating it on node two, except two steps where we'll not be creating the file system and will not be creating the subdirectories. That's is what I'm not going to do. Rest all exactly same step. So once you have done it on node one, you should be pretty, it should be pretty easy to do it on node two. So, so that's done. Then what we need to do is we'll create this directory and mount it before doing that before mounting. I'll just show you that I do not have a shared storage called db2ha. So that's not that. So let me create the directory mount it. That is done. And now if I show you, I have a directory of 20 GB. So shared storage is mounted. 
then what we'll be doing is we'll be again changing the etc password file on the node 2 to change the instance owner home directory so let me go back go down so i'm changing the instance whatever we have done on node 1 i'm doing the same thing on node 2 so let me change the instance home directory to the shared location so that's done and once that is done what we will do is we'll go as the instance owner pwd i am in shared location and if i do ls minus l sql lib you can see the sql lib is there or if i go here and if i show you this all the sub directories whatever we created on node one are there uh, as you can see the time is 9:33 or 25 uh, minutes after so these directories were created exactly five minutes before we, we created them on node one so now what what we need to do is we'll try to create the instance which will fail the reason of that is pretty simple because we already it will complain that instance already exists so if i run this particular command it's going to fail let's wait for it to fail once it fails yeah you see it it actually failed a major error occurred so now what we will be doing is we'll go to db2ha under that we'll go to the instance home directory under that we have sql lib i'll just remove that particular sql lib so that's done so now i will rerun my instance creation command and this time it will go fine and the instance dbp is going to get created so this particular step is recreate the instance whatever instance that we created on node 1 we are recreating the instance on node 2 once the instance is created we are going to now create the database before creating the database i'll change the default db path to shared location the direct path to the shared location create the database and convert the database into log arc and the log arc math one this disk i'm using the disk location and that also will be in the shared location so let's see if the instance is created and if the instance is created i'm going to run all of this command together okay so let's see yeah the instance is created previously it failed so now let me log in as the instance owner so this everything is is happening db2 get instance you can see that this is the dbp instance so now what i'll do i'll try to create the database before creating the database I, as i mentioned i'll be changing the default db path so i've done that started the instance i'm creating the database here and just to verify that database is getting created on in the shared location let's go uh, to the db2 ha the shared location ls minus l the cd db that's where the database is supposed to get created so you can see the instance directory got created under that node 00, 0 and under that you can see a database called ha db is getting created so the, my database is right now getting created the next step is we now need to set up the once the instance is created we need to set up the PSA. For that, I'm starting my node one. I I did shut it down, so I'm starting it back on. And now what we need to do is we we have only two commands left. That is prep node. So as root, I'll be running this particular command on both the nodes. And once that is done, I will be using this particular file as an input to db2 ha high queue to set up my instance ha. As I mentioned, this particular file is the modification of a sample file which is pre-shipped with the db2 so let me log into the inst to the box and show you where that particular file is so open the terminal and i'll show you that particular file cd db2 ha home directory instance home directory under instance home directory sql lib under sql lib samples under samples ha under ha xml under that you can see share storage this is the file that i have used so g added this particular file and you can see that this is the file that i am using to set up my tsa and this particular file is it has got a lot of commands so you once you read through you will be able to understand how to modify these particular parameters we need to only modify these particular parameters uh which are specified so we do not have to specify uh, modify this we just have to change the domain name if you want to keep same we can keep the quorum network the ip addresses that you are using the then the nodes the two nodes and the instance name and the mount point so we can we so i'll show you how my file looks like so this is how my file looks like 
So the name is, I have not changed it. It's exactly from that file. Then what is the IP, the codom IP, the networks, the two networks. So whatever the network, the network IPs, the two nodes, the instance name, the mount point, okay, and the virtual IP. So this is the file that I'll be using. Before uh, this particular DB2 Haiku command, we have to run as the instance owner while the prep node, we have to do the prep node on both the nodes. Okay, so let's see. Okay, let's see if my database got created. The database is still getting created. While the database is getting created, let me run those two commands, the prep node command using on node one and node two. So I'm going to run the prep node. The prep node command has to be run as the instance owner. So, okay, so that's done. That's done. So now, once the database is created, it's going to take the backup. And okay, so that looks like the database got created. Now it's actually taking the backup, which means it's actually set the logger path one parameter, and then it's going to convert the it's going to convert the uh, database from circular log into archival logging. So once that is done, we have only these two steps remaining. The prep node I have already done. So now our final step is log in to the as the instance owner and run the db2 haiku command. So let me do that from here. So clear for that I need to log in as the instance owner. And the I've already set that particular file in this location. So I'll just show you how that file looks like. It's exactly what the same file that I have. Okay, so this is the file that I'll be using, and this is the same file that I've shown you here. Uh, and that particular file we will be passing as the input to db2 hiq minus f uh, the instance ha so the i know that my database is getting created but it will okay so the database okay so the backup and everything completed so now i have finally run the db2 haiku so it's going to create the domain so let's before let's see what is the output of lsm and it says no online domain found so if if the db2 haiku command is successful, then a domain will get created and all the resources will be added to TSA. So the domain is created. Let's see the output. And you can see the previously it complained no online domain. Now it says no resource group, which means the domain is complete, complete created. But as of now, the resources are not added. The next step is it's going to create the quorum, the networks, uh, the mount points, and the finally, the instance is going to add the instance and database. So let's wait for it. So still now it says no resource groups defined. So it's going to let, let's wait for it to create the codom IP. So that's done. Looks successful. The network on the node one done. Network on node two done. So if I now run LSM, we should be able to see some resources. So yes, we are able to see some resources on node one. We should be able to see it from here as well. So and you can see this is very important the node 2 is online the node 1 is offline why the node 2 is online because when we created the instance the, the when we create when we set up the tsa the instance was running on node 2 so that's that is the reason why the node 1 is active node node 2 is active node and node 1 is passive node as you can see the instance is running on node 2 it is not running on node 1 which means the node one is passive, the node two is active. Okay, so as you can see, now everything is successful, successful. So looks like everything is successful. So let's visit the output of this command and understand what, what are the resources that got created. So we have, this is the nodes, two nodes, this is the NIX. The node two is online, this is the virtual IP. This is the mount point and this is the instance and everything is online on node 2. Now what we will be doing, so just to verify, do I have the mount point on node 1? I should not have it because it is on the node 2. Do I have the instance up and running on node 1? I should not have it. And do I have the virtual IP? I have config grep inet. I should not have the virtual IP. There is only one IP. Now I will repeat the same commands on node 2 and you should be able to see. So do I have my share storage on node 2? Yes, it is on node 2. Here, no output. 
do I have my instance up and running on node 2? Yes, my instance up and running on node 2. And do I have the virtual IP on node 2? As you can see, 111, the 111, the virtual IP is on node 2. So looks like everything, my active node is node 2 because as I mentioned, when I ran the TSA command, the db2 haiku command, my node 2 was active node. Now, the final step that we are going to do is we are going to shut down our node 2. So what is going to happen when I shut down my node 2 is all the resources are going to move to node 1, the VIP file system instance and the database along with the instance. So let's test that. So I'm going to just click on this. This is my node 2. So host name. Okay. As you can see, it's a node 2 and I'm just going to power off the machine. So that's done. So I've done that. So this, this is node 2 is going to get disconnected. I cannot run any command. So this is the node 1. And now what I'll do is I will run the LSM command and you will see that my node 2 is failed. The output of this LSM is node 2 is failed. So what I'll do in the meanwhile is I will launch one more put this session. This is I'll close this node 2 sessions. These are all they are disconnected anyway. So now I am there are two sessions and you can see the node 2 is now it was online here you can see the node 2 was online online and now it is failed offline so if everything is working fine if whatever setup that we have done is good then what is going to happen is the whip is going to come online on node 1 the mount point is going to come online on node 1 and the instance is going to come online on node 1 so let's verify Okay, see it shows pending online. The the VIP has come online from offline. It has turned it to online. The mount point has is still not come online. It's, it's still in the pending online. So let's give it a minute. If it does not come online, we might have to just restart this. It happens sometimes. Okay, the mount point has come online actually, but let's see what is the output of LSM. Okay, so mount point has also come online and the now final step is the instance so we need to wait for the instance to come online so let's wait let's see if the instance came up and it looks like the instance has not come online so it's pending online so give it a minute okay give it a minute while it is happening what i'll do is like i will restart my node 2 so that it should join back to the cluster so give it a minute now what i'll do is lsm it's the instance only the instance is now not come online everything is good so let's wait for the instance it's it's pending online now i have as i mentioned that i have started the node 2 so the node 2 should come online and it should join to the tsa so for some reason if the node 1 goes down so the node 1 is going to be the active node so let's see the output of lsm and as you can see my everything is come online. So if I run the LSM command here, it was pending online and now it is online. So now let me compare. So let me clear the screen. And now I'm on node one. So let me run this command. As you can see, 20 GB disk, the instance db2cc, it was not there here. And the VIP, the VIP has also moved to node one. So this exactly what the VIP file system instance and the database is now on the node one. Let's verify the database is actually active. So su minus dbp, db2 list active databases. Let's verify. And as you can see, the HADB is active. So the database is also come online. So the instance and the database has come online on node one. And what I've done is I've started the node two. So let's wait for it you know the, the node 2 to join so it still says failed offline okay so it's going to connect once the node 2 is ready it's going to connect to the tsa and it's ready so now for some reason if anything happens to node 1 again the node 2 is going to take over okay so the node 2 is going to take over so i'll just wait for the node 2 to join the cluster once that is done we will stop the video so 
what we learned is here the most important thing you know is the shared storage you need to make sure that the disk is accessible on both the nodes and it, actually the setup is pretty simple where you can go wrong is the instance creation so you need to make sure that the home directory of the instance owner is the shared location so that is one thing that you need to make sure and the next thing that well, if you create the instance first on node 1 and you move to node 2 then you need to recreate the instance on node 2 and before doing that you need to remove the sql lib or rename it and then run the db2 i create command if you get this right then probably your setup is going to work fine so let's verify whether our node 2 has joined and as you can see the node 2 has joined the cluster and if if for some reason if anything happens to node 1 node 1 is right now active node node 2 is passive node and if anything happens to node 1 automatically the instance the virtual ip and the mount point along with the database will move to node 2 so this was the concept of active passive i hope you like this particular video we covered step by step setup of ibm db2 tsa 2 node instance ha thank you for watching and see you in next tutorial and if you did like my video please subscribe to my channel so that i can make keep making this kind of videos in future thank you and see you in next tutorial bye bye